like apples. It's worming day here on the ranch. We give our horses wormer to make sure that they're free of any kind of intestinal parasites. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. Hey guys, my name is Ashley, and I'm here with Maddie. And Tex and Deuce, apparently. And today we're gonna be showing you a little bit of what it's like to come out here and worm all of our horses. So what we have here is a wormer, it's called ivermectin. It's a certain kind of medication that gets any kind of parasites that might be in our horse's systems out. We have to do all of our horses at one time, as if we only do a selection of the horses, they'll actually just reinfect each other. And then all we've done is waste our time warming them. So we have a lot of horses here on the ranch, as you guys probably know, so it's a little bit of a long process. But we're gonna show you how we go about orally worming all of our horses. your warmer is going to be the dosage and a lot of warmers like this one that we have here come with a handy dandy little tool that allows us to uh, select the weight of our horse and move this little plunger dial lower or higher depending on how much warmer we're going to give. Now all of our horses they're full-sized horses they're all quite big large quarter horses so for all of ours minus the ones that are excessively small like some of our minis and things like that we're going to be giving the full dose of our warmer here. So deuce probably weighs about 1200, 1100 pounds. And look at that, that's the biggest dosage on our wormer. If you had a bigger horse, like a really excessively sized horse, you might have to be using more than one tube, which is a bit annoying, but still, if you're gonna do it, you wanna make sure that you do it right. So the first thing that we need to know about giving wormer is that we're going to be coming into the mouth and giving it orally. If I give it to Deuce way down here near his tongue, he's just gonna spit it out. And we're gonna have wormer all over the floor and all over Miss Faith here, who's sitting beneath Deuce. So I want to make sure that I get the whole, woo, goodness, the whole tube all the way up in here to a point where he can't spit it out. And a lot of people, me included, but not everybody, like to put the horse's head up a little bit or just keep them from lowering it all the way to the ground so that they can't try and clear their mouth of the warmer. The warmer is quite a sticky paste, so it would be hard for them to spit it all out, but still they can do some pretty amazing things like spread it all over you, for example. So we want to do our best to make sure that Deuce is getting wormed and not Maddie or myself. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like to worm him now. First step is to pop our little cap off. The warmer actually smells really nice like apple. I think it makes us feel better more so than the horses. For the horses, it's not a bad taste. It is apple flavored. Um, for the most part, the reactions that you'll get where your horse isn't wanting their wormer is just because they don't like you shoving food into their mouth. They would rather go and eat the food themselves but we still need to get it done. It's a necessary thing for us to do to them. So we just make sure that we get it done nice and quickly and that we keep them as safe and happy as possible. But for Deuce here, I'm gonna take my tube and I'm gonna go right in the corner of his mouth and up as far as I can and depress the entire plunger and then make sure he doesn't put his head all the way down. And he's licking it, he's not going, oh my gosh, that was the worst tasting thing ever not a big deal but we go through and we do all of our horses we wouldn't go and do this right before a photo shoot because as you can see they get little bits on their lips but otherwise deuce is all wormed and he's good for the next several months and we're gonna go around and do the rest of our horses now hi i'm maddie and this is tech and I am going to be worming him. And like Ashley said earlier, he's about 1,200 pounds, just like Deuce was. And so we're gonna be giving him the full tip. So first, we're gonna pop the cap off. And then I like to hold the top of the halter as just kind of a way to keep him so that if he tries to throw his head away from me, I can still hold him towards me. I'm gonna bring it up into the corner of his mouth. 
way up and backwards and then try and hold his head up. So different warmers are going to protect your horses and kill off different kinds of worms and parasites and things like that. And it'll actually say on your warmer what kinds those are. And some people, there are, there are two different practices. One, or the group of people who do what we call rotational warming, which is they use different kinds of warmers at different times of the year in an attempt to work their way through all these warmers and be able to kill off all the different parasites, depending on what seasons they might be most prevalent. And depending on where they live, they might have a recommendation from their vet or just from other horse people as to what they need to warm with at what time of the year. But the other practice is to do a fecal sample through your vet. So you can actually collect some of your horse's poop, send it into your vet to have it analyzed, and your vet will come back and tell you exactly what kind of worms or parasites, if any, your horse has. And then you get to decide from there what kind of warmer would be best. So what would actually work against the kinds of worms and parasites your horse has. What we do is a rotational warming practice. So we warm with different things depending on the season and depending on what our vet recommends that we do because he's very familiar with the different horses in the area. But right now we're just coming in with the ivermectin, which is a very standard wormer, has very few side effects unless you give it in very, very, very big dosages. Like I could take this entire thing of wormer. What's funny is we haven't wormed him yet, so I'm not sure why he's doing that. Um, but I could actually eat the entire thing of wormer and be fine. Yeah, it's not recommended, I'm not going to do it, but it would be fine. So you're not messing with chemicals or things like that that are super duper duper dangerous to people or that you're going to injure your horse with unless they have an allergy. of horses and as you can see by the number of warmers in my hand we have a whole bunch of horses out here that we're gonna warm we actually have eight of them in this pasture alone and as again we want to make sure that we do all of the horses in one group that are gonna be coming into contact with one another's feces because otherwise warming her she's just gonna go eat worms off the ground from another horse and that brings up the fun topic about what kinds of things worms do to horses and how they spread so the number one way that they're gonna spread is by being on the ground, either in poop or in the soil around horses where they're living. And horses like Bella that are eating off the floor as our horses normally do, are going to be ingesting those worms or picking them up as they eat. So some worms will go into the digestion tra digestional tract of the horse and end up living in the small or large intestine and creating a big issue there. Others are actually gonna go into the bloodstream and those I think I find a little bit more icky. <laughs> But all of them are bad and all of them are gross. But you know, them eating off the floor is not the end of the world as long as they're not ingesting too much sand, as long as they're on a rotational or fecal sample sort of warming situation so that we're making sure any worms that are on the ground, they're not ingesting and keeping in their system. Because if our horse does have a really large, what we call load or number of worms in their system, it can cause a number of issues. One of which being bloat. Now Bella here is not bloated, she's just a little round. <laughs> Keep our horses nice and fat. <laughs> um, but they'll actually be not super heavy in other areas of their body, so you won't see fat cover anywhere, except their, the middle section of their body will be very big and round as if they were very obese or fat. But really it's just that they have that many worms in their stomach, in their system, making them appear that large. So that's like super duper gross. And what happens is those worms are sitting there in the stomach or the intestinal tract of that horse and getting all of the nutrients that that horse is eating and digesting, they're absorbing that and growing and multiplying and the horse isn't gonna receive any of those nutrients, vitamins, proteins, things like that that the horse needs. And that will lead to your horses becoming very, very thin in everywhere except for this big belly area. Now Bella here you can see is plenty fat all over the place. So her belly is not a worm issue but we, what we would call a wormy belly would be a really big bloated stomach and then no fat cover anywhere else because the horse is not getting the nutrients that they're actually eating. So when people have issues putting weight on their horses, their horse is too thin, one of the first things the vet will tell you to do is to warm up. Make sure the horse is not competing with any kind of little bugs living in their system eating all of their food. That's gonna help you help them gain weight a little bit more efficiently. The second problem that you'll see if your horses are really wormy is you'll start seeing a lot of diarrhea. 
running down the backside of your horse. And it, it depends on the load that they have in the horse and how they react to this. But if your horse has a lot of, you know, bad issues going on with their digestion or they have a point in their digestion where there's a bunch of worms and nothing's getting past that, horses are very prone to digestional upsets. And one way that they'll show you that that's an issue is with diarrhea and, you know, just they're not being able to absorb anything that they need from their, their I guess, food supply because the worms are taking it and so their gut is just all out of whack. So if we notice our horses with a lot of diarrhea, we look, hi Bella, oh, and gas apparently. We look for any signs of diarrhea in our horses, any signs of that wormy belly with really sunken in areas anywhere else where they're losing weight. Um, but otherwise we, ro we rotationally warm our horses, so we're warming them regularly whether or not it looks like they have worms. But those are just some things that you can keep an eye out for and look for in horses to see if you might need to do a little extra worming or maybe change up your worming protocol a little bit. So this is Oakley and she's one of the taller horses on the ranch, which is why I'm going to be doing her today. Just in case she decides to put her face eight feet up in the air, I have a better chance of sticking with her, but she's going to be very good. Aren't you Oakley? She's going to be very good. Well, look at that. You are going to be pretty good. Keep her head up. Good job. She's pretty low key. Oh. <laughs> and I know it looks like she's smiling, but what she's really doing is, is getting a better scent. She's holding the smell up near her nostrils as she lifts her upper lip like that. And that just helps them sort of identify their surroundings and decide what things are. Being that it's warmer, she's doing it because she's going, Ugh. This is Bailey and she's one of the horses we have that as we know, because we've done it before with her, it's a little bit more obnoxious <laughs> about taking her warmer. Who knows why, it's just a personality thing. But with her, we're always prepared for kind of a little bit of fun. But today, she's going to be perfect. I just know it. Okay, Bailey. Look at that. I didn't drug her, I promise. So now we're in the pasture with our small little horses and donkeys here. Donkeys actually are wormed the exact same way as horses are. The only thing different about chocolate from the rest of the horses that we've been worming is the fact that he's smaller. So I've used that little white strip here, that little dial on my wormer, to make it so where it's more adequate for his size rather than a full-sized horse. Again, I probably could give him the whole thing of warmer. He's not just going to spontaneously combust or anything ridiculous, but we're gonna give him the proper dosage for his size because that's what's on the label and that's always what we do. But some of the even smaller horses that we have are gonna take even less. So we have to estimate his weight. We could put him on the scale, but an estimation is fine for a drug like, drug like ivermectin. Um, the hard part is actually just getting down low enough to get it into his little tiny mouth. Because if I bend over him in order to do it, I'm gonna get whacked in the chin with his head. So we have to be careful when we're doing the little ones that even though they're small and they don't seem quite as intimidating as the big horses, we don't put ourselves into scary situations. for hanging out with us today. We hope that you learned a little bit about worms and why we want to deworm our horses to keep them healthy and safe and maybe saw a little bit of the more eccentric sides of the personalities of our horses because this is always a fun day for us and we hope you enjoyed it just as much. If you enjoy this video we'd love to hear from you. Like and subscribe and leave a comment about what you might like to see in future videos. We'll see you back on the ranch.